Hey everybody, Sean here from 3M. As always, thank you so much for joining us for this video. Today's topic is gonna to be on our flexible bumper patch. This is a little lesser known way to repair bumpers. A lot of the technicians out there are used to using adhesives on the backside rather than a patch. And we find that through our training, a lot of guys aren't aware of this product. So we wanna show you how this works to repair a plastic bumper and make it look professional. Okay, before we get started here, let's keep in mind to always use the proper PPE. So for this video, I'm gonna use some safety glasses, uh, a respirator at times, and a couple different types of gloves. So I'll also provide a link to that safety information and the warranty information in the description below. Let's get started. Okay, for this repair, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, apply a patch to the backside. So that's what this product is here. This is the 5888 flexible bumper patch. And the nice thing about this patch is, well, you don't have to wait for adhesive to cure. Uh, it's real easy to use uh, and it sticks very, very well. It's not gonna come off, I guarantee that. So uh, what I'm gonna do is cut this to size here and apply this. I'm gonna use an adhesion promoter as well. Uh, but, but before I do that, let's just talk about this a little bit and what we're trying to do. So you can see this is the kind of what we would call a traditional repair here, where uh, we're using adhesive on the back side. And this is a good strong adhesive, does a nice job, but again, maybe not as cosmetically pleasing as the patch. You can see on the front, beautiful job, feathered out, works nice. But on the back side, I, sometimes I prefer to use this patch. So what we're gonna do is apply this patch, but before we do that, we have to prep the front side first. It's a little different than doing the adhesive repair as well, where with the adhesive repair, we apply the adhesive to the back side first, then prep the front. In this case, we're gonna prep the front first so we don't damage our patch through the front side and get adhesive uh, or dust all in the adhesive on the patch. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll get this ready uh, and then we'll be ready for our patch. But before we do that, I did wanna point something out very, very important. So when you look here, you can see I tapered this out, um, made it a little bit wider, made it a nice gradual surface transition uh, so I don't have any sharp edges anywhere that'll cause any mapping or read through, whatever you want to call it. But, um, and then I sanded it with 80 grit. But you can see here, there's a couple spots where there's some shiny plastic. And anytime you're gonna apply some kind of adhesive to plastic, it needs to be roughed up so it feels fuzzy. You can't have any of these shiny areas here. Those shiny areas just will not grip on to the repair material well. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and touch these areas up. Then I'm gonna feather with 180 around the perimeter here where I think my adhesive is gonna end and feather into. So I want a nice 180 surface there. Once that's on, we'll be ready for that patch. So I'm gonna get started on that and we'll see you in a minute. All right, so we're back, and as you can see, what I did is I cleaned up those areas uh, that were shiny. So now they're, they're nice and roughed up uh, to give that adhesive some good tooth to grab onto. And then in the surrounding area, I used 180 grit where my adhesive is gonna transition and feather out. So we should be pretty, in pretty good shape on the front side here. Um, eventually, I'm gonna need adhesion promoter on there, but I'm gonna wait on that because I'm gonna have to flip it over on its face because now we're gonna put our patch on the back side. So first thing we want to do is clean this off here. We're going to apply that, that patch. And the thing to note here is that there really is no prep necessary on the backside other than cleaning. I guess the one exception would be is sometimes you get a bumper that has some paint overspray on the backside. It's pretty common. In that case, you would take a, a good plastic cleaner and uh, uh, scotch bright and just clean that overspray off. But we're not gonna sand the backside. So that's kind of counterintuitive, guys. You think you need to rough this up and sand it, but this patch sticks best to a nice, flat, unsanded surface. So let me clean this up and then we'll uh, keep going. 
Okay, so now you can see I've cleaned this up really nice with uh, a, a good all-purpose cleaner. And the next step is gonna be applying our patch. So what we wanna do is make sure that we cut this patch large enough to have about an inch and a half or two inches all the way around that repair area. So the only thing we're limited to here is the size of the patch. So we don't wanna use this patch to repair anything larger than this size. It's not a good idea to stick two of them together for a really long repair. We're, we're limited really to the size of this patch. So I'm just gonna look at this here. I've got about, I've got about an inch and a half on each side, about an inch and a half this way. I really don't have to do a whole lot to this particular patch. I'm just gonna cut the corners a little bit, round them off. <clears throat> just kind of looks a little bit nicer. And again, that's the point of this patch. You get a little more professional looking repair uh, in case somebody was to look at the back side. So now this is ready. Now here's the thing a lot of guys don't realize is that the adhesion promoters for this product are down in the bottom here. So you have to open up the bottom of the box and pull these out. So this is the adhesion promoter here, and this is not the same adhesion promoter as this can here, okay? These are two different adhesion promoters. So this is for uh, the adhesives on the front side or back side, and this is for the patch. So make sure you're using the correct adhesive for the patch. So I'm gonna apply this, let me get my respirator on here quick. And I'm gonna apply this, trying to wipe in one direction as much as possible and just wet that surface real nice. Okay, we'll let that flash off for a minute. And uh, as soon as that's flashed off, we'll continue with the repair by applying the patch. Okay, we're back. Uh, I gave that uh, adhesion promoter a good five minutes uh, to flash off. And by the way, if you have any questions like how long to let that flash off or any questions about the patch, there are instructions in the kit. I know a lot of guys just kind of toss these aside. Uh, maybe a good idea to read these over at least the first time you use this product and get familiar with them. So five minutes, flashed off, now we're ready for the patch itself. I'm actually gonna remove one glove because it's a little tricky to get this patch on with gloves on because your gloves wanna stick to it. So <clears throat> I'm gonna peel this liner off the back side. And now the patch is ready to apply. So I wanna get that centered as good as I can. I like to kind of start from one end and work my way across. The adhesive on here is called pressure sensitive adhesive, which means the harder you push down, the more pressure you put on it, the better it's gonna stick. So we wanna get that stuck on there really nice. Uh, some of you guys may have a roller that you use for fiberglass work or something of that nature. Rollers work really nice as well, but you don't really need that. You can just press down with your hands to get that on really well. Now, the longer this is on here, the stronger it's gonna be. So if you try to pick at it right now, it's not gonna be as strong as uh, in a couple hours where you're just not gonna be able to do that. So our patch is all set for the, for the back side here. And again, as you can see, it looks a little neater. So if anybody was under their vehicle getting a brake job or whatever and looks up and see this, they're probably not gonna question it. So let's take a look at the front side. So as I said, now the first thing we need to do here is apply an adhesion promoter. So again, I'm gonna get my respirator on here. And remember, this is not the same adhesion promoter as we used on the back side. So this is the adhesion promoter for the 5887 cosmetic repair material. And this here, we wanna put on what we call I like to call it kind of a medium wet coat. We absolutely do not want to soak it, but we want to get the surface wetted out, okay? All right, so as you can see, it's wet, but it's not soaked. So there's one other thing we need to think about here that I didn't mention, um, but when I clean this, I use my cleaner only on the painted areas and where there's raw plastic or exposed plastic, I only use compressed air. And the reason for that is these cleaners can wick into that plastic once it's been sanded and it's bare. 
um, it'll wick in there and a lot of times it'll stay in there until you put it through the bake cycle and it'll work its way out and loosen up the adhesive. So that's when you could get a bubble or something of that nature. So, so you can use the liquid cleaners in the surrounding area, but only compressed air on the raw plastic. Okay, so I need to equalize this cartridge. So just run a little bit of product out. So I have it equally coming out of both sides. So I know I'm gonna get a good mix. Then I want to attach my mix nozzle. And just run a little bit of product out. And we're ready to go. Okay, so I gave this a good 10 minutes to flash off. So remember on the backside adhesion promoter with the patch, it's five minutes. For the sprayed on adhesion promoter, it's 10 minutes flash time. So now I've got my patch on the backside. Now I need to fill this in. So I've got my 5887 multi-purpose repair material. Um, really flexible product, really good stuff. We also recommend it as a seam sealer, by the way, if you've seen it for that. So one couple things when I do this is I wanna first put down what I call a tight coat. So what this does is it really squeezes or forces the adhesive down into the repair material so I get a nice tight bond. So really scraping, you're scraping most of it back off, but you're forcing it down into the surface. Okay, so now once I do that, now I can go ahead and overfill this to allow for my sanding. Now notice I keep the nozzle kind of submerged in the adhesive so that I don't get any air pockets. Now if I zigzag or whatever, I'm gonna get air pockets in this and end up with pinholes. So keeping that tip in there keeps any air from getting in that area. And then what we need to do, because this product does self-level just a little bit, I need to kind of cup my spreader so that I'm not uh, applying it really flat and allowing it to sag down in there. So I'll show you what I mean by that when I do this. Once I get enough material on here, you're better with a little more than a little less because um, then you don't have to reapply it. You can do it in one step. So now when I say cup my spreader, I kind of bend it with my fingers a little bit and that way it keeps the surface a little bit high. If I leave it flat, sometimes it'll, get, it'll be too low. So a few swipes this way. Got a little material on there. I'll get that off. I like to kind of go around the edges, make sure it's forced in there really good. Again, cup the spreader. Go around the edges. You can get adhesive on the paint. You want to try to avoid it as much as you can, but I know I'm going to sand that off in those areas anyways. So now I can see I've filled that really well. We'll give that a good 15 minutes and we'll be able to sand it down and uh, we'll have a really nice professional looking repair.
Okay, so we're back. I gave this enough time to set up and sanded it. Um, I've got a little fine sanding left to do, but for the most part, it's ready to go. Uh, you can see no pinholes, looks real good. Now the back side with our patch looks nice and neat. Um, again, you know, maybe it's something you haven't seen before. Um, it looks a little neater than the adhesive patch. I think of it as just another tool in the toolbox for the plastic repair. Now, one other thing I should mention is always consult the OEM information for any guidance they may offer on these repairs. Keep in mind, some vehicles may have some sensors behind the bumper where the manufacturer may have some restrictions on what can or cannot be repaired. So always look those OEM recommendations up every time you make a repair. So thanks so much for joining us for this video. Um, as always, if you have any comments or questions, uh, you can leave them below. Also hit that subscribe button and ding the notification bell. For more content like this, look us up at 3mcollisionacademy.com and I'll leave a link in the description for that below as well. So again, thank you so much and we'll see you next time.